Okay, so welcome to our mini class this week. Our theme is around energy this week and especially that kind of spring energy. Last week, our theme was around rest. And the thing about energy is we don't have energy if we don't rest, right? So if you're like me, you probably just wanna keep going and do all the things all the time. And I learned some time through being exhausted and burning out that rest is so crucial to our ability to function in the world and to have energy. And so winter is kind of like rest for the plants and the trees and the animals and, and even for the people, right? In, in winter, our energy goes down um, and this is natural, right? We, we tend to pathologize and call it seasonal affective disorder, which is a thing for sure, but it's also really normal for us to feel less energy. The days are shorter if there's less light. Um, even traditionally, the foods that we ate in winter were denser um, than the, the fresh foods that we have available to us in the summer. So after this time of going in and down and, and, and sort of resting through the winter, the world wakes up in the spring and we have this burst of energy. And maybe you can feel it in your body as well, that you feel more energized these days than um, during the winter. That may not be true for you. Uh, but I know that for many people, that is the case, that we feel a little more energized. So um, <laughs> on that note, we're going to start with rest today and go from there to a more energized place. So you can go ahead and lie down. Um, I suggest you lie down with your knees bent and your uh, feet on the floor, hands on the body so that you can feel your breath. And I will meet you on the mat in that position and we'll go from there. So you're going to come into a lying position, if you're not there already. Knees bent, and that just helps to lengthen your lower back a little bit. Hands can rest on your belly. Maybe one on your rib cage, one in your belly, or wherever it's comfortable. And we'll just tune into the breath for a moment. So energy comes from lots of different sources. Rest is one of the ways that we re-energize ourselves. In yoga, energy is referred to as prana. And prana comes from breath, energizing with the breath. It can come from the food that we eat. We can even bring prana in through our thoughts and our emotions. So if we stay really stuck on negativity, we tend, it tends to eat our energy. So when we have thoughts of hopefulness, thoughts of moving forward, or even just being present with ourselves and our emotions, it tends to unlock a whole lot of energy in our systems. So I invite you to simply notice what's true for you right now as you rest. What are you aware of? Do you feel exhausted if so? Acknowledge and notice that. feel neutral, acknowledge and notice that, or maybe you feel already kind of energized in your body. Maybe you feel over-energized. Sometimes there's too much energy and it feels like agitation in the body. So whatever you're bringing into our session today, notice that. So another way that we draw energy into the system is through movement, right? When we're lethargic and we sit and we do nothing for a long time, we don't want to do anything. So movement helps to engage our energy systems. So let's start with a little super simple movement, bringing the knees towards the body, hands on the knees. I say it's super simple, but actually not for everybody. So please uh, know that if this is actually challenging for you, then that's, that's fine too. And sometimes doing one leg at a time it is a little easier. We'll draw both knees in toward the body and then send both knees away. So it's just a little rocking movement, forward and back, shifting the weight from the low back out more to the sacral area. Just waking up some energy in the back of the body. 
And then maybe circling around with your knees so you're massaging around the sacrum on the ground. And just want to say if, you, if it feels uncomfortable, if it's too um, hard on the ground for your, your body, you might want to bring a blanket underneath your hips so that you can find a little more softness, a little more ease. Circle the other direction as well. Great, and then come back to the center. We'll keep one knee up and release the other foot to the floor. So here you have options. So we're going to stretch this bent leg or the, the leg that we're holding. We're going to stretch it out on the ground and bring it back into the body. And so your hands, while you're doing that, they could either come to your belly and then back over your knee. Or if you want a little bit bigger stretch, as the leg stretches out, you can take the arms overhead or out to the sides and then back in. So we'll do this a few times, whichever arm movement feels best to you. If you want, you can coordinate your breathing so you're inhaling as you stretch out, exhaling as you draw in. Right. And then next time this knee comes in towards your body, I'm going to invite you to stretch it up toward the ceiling just so you feel it, a gentle stretch. This isn't really so much about the stretch here, but about engaging. So we're going to engage the core, draw down and in through the core. You can use your hands on your belly to, to feel that engagement if you like. And then we'll slowly lower this leg down. Try to keep your neck, your face, your shoulders relaxed. So you're using the core and a little bit the hip flexor in the front of the hip. You can hover above the ground, flex your foot, and then slowly release and lower it down. You can stretch out both legs for a moment, let both legs relax. Notice how one leg feels compared to the other. You might feel a little more energy woken up in the, the leg that we've worked with. Maybe not, so there's no right or wrong answer. And let's bend both knees again, and we'll work with the other side. So bring the opposite knee in now, and pausing here for a couple of breaths. And then again, stretching it on the ground while you either bring the arms to the sides, overhead, or just let them rest on your belly as the leg stretches out. So whatever feels right for you. Just bring some movement, engaging a little bit through the hip flexors and the core, waking up the energy a bit through the middle of the body, through the legs. And then when you're ready, bring the knee in, we'll stretch the leg toward the ceiling again. It does not need to be straight. You want to feel a light stretch through the back of the leg, nothing at all intense. And then we're going to engage the core, press down and in with the muscles of the core, and then slowly lower this leg. If it feels like a strain for you, bend the knee as you lower it. Otherwise, you can move it straight as it comes down. Check in with your shoulders, face and neck. Can you stay soft here? Maybe hover above the ground and feel that engagement. Okay, and then lowering the leg. We'll stretch out the other leg as well. Let both legs relax and fall away to the sides and take a few breaths here. And then bending both knees again, we'll bring both feet to the ground. Let the arms come to the ground now, just away from your body a little bit. <clears throat> and line your heels up more or less under your knees, about hip distance apart. So we're going to work to open up the front of the body a bit more here to open the hips and create a little more space and relax the belly as we come up into bridge pose. So I invite you to go really slowly, first press into your feet. You can start by just lifting a little and then lowering. You can pause and then 
Lift a little higher if that's okay for you. So lift and lower a few times. Take your time, don't worry about how you're breathing, but do keep on breathing. And then at some point, if it feels okay to you, you can stay in that pose for a few breaths. So as you're staying, if you're staying, think about your knees going away from your shoulders. Shoulders are anchored, but relaxed on the ground. Arms relaxed. Breathing into the belly, softening. Feel the effort in the hips, the thighs. So the legs are working, upper body relaxing. Take a couple more breaths if you're still with me. And then you'll slowly release and lower down. And bring your knees up in towards your chest. You can rock side to side or repeat the forward and back movement, whatever would feel good here. Just stretch the back a little and release. And then let's slowly release the feet to the floor. We're going to roll to one side. Use your hand to support you as you come upright and we'll come right around onto our hands and knees into table position. So knees under the hips, hands right under the shoulders. You can soften the elbows, but try not to kind of dump your weight into your shoulders. So you're pressing into your hands and Strong, but nice and easeful in the elbows. So breathing in, tilt the tailbone towards the ceiling, lift the head slightly and draw the chest forward between the arms. And then rounding your back, and if you like, you can also send your hips back towards your heels for child's pose. Moving back to all fours, a little arch in the back, and then softening, rounding, as you may be with back towards child's pose. So a few more at your own pace. Now for those of you who are wanting a little bit more, you can add in downward dog. So instead of coming to child's pose, next time you're exhaling, you can tuck your toes under, lift it up to downward dog. And then come right back down to all fours, back to child's pose. And again, if you want to stay in downward dog, you can take a moment, come into the pose, maybe walk on the spot. If downward dog's not your thing today, maybe child's pose for a few breaths instead. As you're ready, knees come down. And if it's comfortable for you, you can try taking your knees a little bit apart, toes close together. Send your hips back towards your heels and let your head come down either could be on your hands, maybe stacked or flat or on the ground. And taking the knees apart gives you space for the belly to expand and be free. So coming into your breath here, if you're not comfortable, shift so you are. A few more breaths, feeling the presence of your breath, maybe in the belly, the lower back, wherever you can feel it really. Okay, and then when you're ready, we'll make our way back up to all fours. So for this next one, we're going to engage the core a little bit. So um, actually, we're not going to do that quite yet. We're going to bring the hands a little bit forward of the shoulders and come into a kneeling plank. So a little bit of engagement in the core here. And then shift back. So stretching out the shoulders, the, the hips probably won't go all the way to the heels here. 
and then shift forward. So you wanna find a straight line, shoulders, hips, knees, and then shift back. So come forward and this time we'll hold. So now you wanna feel engaged through the core enough to just keep your body in that straight line. And then bend your elbows and we'll roll down. Thighs come down, belly comes down, chest, forehead, and then slide your hands forward so that your elbows are on the ground and your hands are on either side of your face and your elbows are tucked close into your sides. So from here, we wanna engage and press down with the hips and legs. So you're gonna gently squeeze through the buttocks, squeeze the thighs, press down into the earth. If your feet feel like they might cramp, you can tuck your toes under or place a blanket underneath your ankles. And then from here, with your arms, we're gonna pull back toward the hips. And if you're anchored in your hips and you're pulling back with your arms, you might feel a little bit of traction in your spine. So the spaces between the vertebrae, getting a little bit more space as you traction your spine. And from this place of traction, inhale and gently lift up. Head and chest coming up. Keep pulling back with the arms as you exhale and lower down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. So we're strengthening the back body here. So you're not pushing down with your arms. You're pulling back towards your hips. And the muscles in the back of the body are contracting to lift you up. If you like, you can stay a few breaths. If you are tempted to push in your arms and try to lift up even higher, resist that temptation and lift your arms. So feel your back working. If it feels like too much, come down anytime. Good. And then as you're ready, slowly lower down. You can bring your hands under your head if you like or turn your head to one side. Bend your knees and let your knees go, or sorry, your feet can go side to side here. And then we'll come back to the center, stretch the legs back behind you, bring your elbows into your sides again. And this time we're going to come into a little bit of a different pose. It's called Sphinx pose, where the elbows come forward under the shoulders. But we're gonna start the same way. So you wanna engage and press down. And as you do that, it helps to lengthen and support your lower back. So from that pressing down through the lower body, again, lift up with the upper body and then slide your elbows out underneath your shoulders into Sphinx. So instead of dropping into your shoulders, press down into your elbows, lift the chest, keep pressing down with your thighs. If you feel jamming up in your lower back, lift your belly button a little bit. So your lower back has got less uh, extension. From here, if you wanna work with your core a little bit more, and this is totally optional, you're going to think about lifting up, so engaging the belly, lifting the belly, and then maybe lifting the thighs, coming onto your knees. So your belly's engaged, and then slowly release and lower down. And again, if you like, think about belly lifting, coming up with the thighs, and lowering down. Okay, one more time, press down, lift up. Stay for a couple of breaths, maybe, and then lower. Great. Now, that's challenging enough, perhaps, but if you want more, and only if you want more, so if you've had enough, just lie down, rest for a moment. If doing it on the knees was, was good for you, then stay with that. And if you want to try a little more challenge, tuck your toes under, lift your belly, come onto your knees, and then maybe lift your knees and breathe. Great, and when you're ready, knees come down, thighs come down, belly comes down. And let's come back down onto, right onto the mat, head can rest on the hands. Turn your toes in, heels out, 
and rest. So take a moment here to relax, relax your hips, relax your thighs, relax your belly, breathe into your belly, breathe into your lower back if you can. And then when you're ready, we're gonna come back to all fours. So hands beside the shoulders or rib cage, lifting up, coming onto your hands and knees. And again, we'll come into either the cat cow or all fours to child's pose so that we can stretch out the back, stretch out the belly after those two poses. So the plank and cobra pose working on opposite sides of the core, right? working on the lower back and the belly. And this movement also working in that same area to bring more softening, more ease now after the effort. If it would feel good to you to circle the hips rather than just going forward and back, feel free to circle. Feel free to explore any movement here that would feel good to you. Right. And then again, we'll come into child's pose. And if you like the variation with the knees wide that gives your belly lots of space for breath, you can take that option. Otherwise, whatever works for you. So again, we'll spend a few breaths here, softening the lower back, softening the belly. As much as possible, breathing into those spaces with your intention, with your breath. And then from here, slowly making your way upright. You can walk your hands back as long as it's okay with your knees and ankles coming up from child's pose onto your heels. We're not going to stay here. So you can swing around with your legs and come to sit. So I like to sit on a cushion or a folded up blanket just to uh, make it a little more comfortable for my back and my hips. And most people do find that getting the hips a little higher is more comfortable for sitting. So um, you're also welcome to sit on a chair. We're just gonna sit for a couple of minutes to integrate the practice. So find whatever is comfortable for you. It does not have to be cross-legged on the ground as I am. Legs could be stretched out. You could be kneeling if you prefer. Sitting on a chair, as I mentioned. The main thing is that you want as much as possible to have a level pelvis with your sit bones supporting your weight. So none of your weight is back on your tailbone, which would happen if your back were rounded and you were slumping a bit. So as you sit upright, weight is on the sit bones. Your spine is free and your breath is more free when you're not jamming up your tailbone by slumping really, really important for energy. So if you sit a lot and you find yourself dragged out at the end of the day, even just coming into a posture like this where we're upright, the breath and the spine are much more free here. And of course, little movement breaks throughout the day are key to keeping energy alive as well. So finding your sit bones, sit here with the, the idea of the sit bones creating a, a kind of anchor. You could imagine roots going down if that helps you. So just as spring comes after a winter of rest, as the roots go down into the earth, the rest of the plants, or in this case our bodies, lift and find energy from the earth. So let's pause here with the breath to feel whatever energy may have awakened in our bodies through the practice today. 
but uh, whatever energy may have awakened through our intention during the practice today, our breath. And then let's bring the hands together at the heart, leaving a little bit of space between the hands to symbolize a little seed resting in that dark space between the hands. Continuing to feel a connection to your roots as you allow that seed to open and lift. So we're lifting the arms. You can open the hands and send that energy out all around you. Let's bring the hands back together again, like that little seed at the heart starts to grow and open. And sends that energy all around us to support us, like a, a sort of energy bubble that we could move in through the day. And one more time. Again, hands back to the heart. Again, tune into your posture. If it feels like effort to sit upright, if it feels like you're working really hard with your hips or lower back, you may want to get your hips a little higher. Maybe not right now, but in future. But as you get the hips a little higher, when especially sitting on the ground, it tends to ease the lower back and the hip flexors. So tune in, can you find a balanced place here? Do you need to adjust? And as you go out into your day, remember that this energy needs to have space to move into, right? If we're squished up, crunched and slouched over, our energy is more blocked. So like the flowers and plants that are starting to grow up, find that lift from your roots and take that with you as you go out into your day. Namaste.